Thanks for coming on the show today, Ken. It is a pleasure. Thank you also for having us in your home here, our little recording session in LA. For those of you on the YouTube version of this, you can see his lovely book collection in the background, which is very cool. Check all these out. I'm sure they're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this makeshift styrofoam tree. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really authentic. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Ken has a great story. I'm super happy that he's going to share it with us today because Ken is a radiologist, an interventional radiologist mm -hmm. specializing in oncology, correct? Mm -hmm. And he himself had a realization that there were some unhealthy habits that he needed to quit and some other lifestyle shifts that he'll probably tell us about. But if you could take us back to the time that you were in private practice. Yeah, so uh, probably about two years ago, uh, I thought I had everything I wanted in life. You know, I was in a private practice group. I was the chief of interventional oncology at my hospital. I was making a really good salary. I bought my dream house. I bought my dream car. And I was in a relationship with a woman I was going to marry, and I thought this this was it. But there was something that was just eating at me. Like why? Why am I not happy? And how did you delve good. deeper into that story? How did you how did you get the answer to that question? Right, and you know it probably took something to just fling me over. Um, there was a period of time during uh, that time in private practice that um, you know I needed shoulder surgery. And I was out for a few weeks, not knowing if I can continue to do surgery. And at that point, I was already starting to think, wow, what, what if I couldn't do this? And the scary part was, I started to dream about what that would be. The scary part was, if I didn't do this, I would probably be happier entertaining or telling stories or speaking. And so that, that, that little seed was planted at that point. Um, you know, fast forward six years, or not six years, six months later, um, you know, I was living in this home, I was working lots, and um, the woman that I was gonna marry, she leaves me for another man. Wow. And at that point, I just I had to take a bird's eye view of my life, right? I looked and I was like, wow. Didn't even know how I was living. I was just, you know, I was just head to the floor, hours at work, not really caring about uh, uh, the relationships I had in my life, and I was like really just lost and empty. And I remember one very distinct moment. I was walking um, into the hospital, it's just exhausted, and. It was a 43-year-old pancreatic cancer patient named Ishmael. And I was looking through the chart. I was gonna do a paracentesis on the guy. And paracentesis is draining fluid. He, he, he had a belly full of fluid. And I was expecting to walk into this room with this really young guy and just be super depressed. But I walk in and a wave of love energy hit me. Doc, how are you, man? I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This is a 43-year-old pancreatic cancer patient probably has a few months to live and he just exudes love and goodness and gratitude and I was just taken back I was like my man how are you how are you beaming like this and he tells the doc it's it's simple you know you know I'm not I'm not here for me you know and Every single moment, every single moment, not even every single day, every single moment, I have the choice to choose how I want to live in this world, you know? And with the time that I do have left, I want to just exude joy and love everywhere I go. And I'm like, oh my God, that is beautiful. And then at that moment there, you know, I was able to step away from my life and kind of take a a bird's eye view of my life and say, is this the life that I want to live? And that really just kind of like uh, snowballed into the life I'm creating for myself now. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So when you had that bird's eye view, mm -hmm. what was the first step you took in order to make some changes? Yeah, well, let's see, let's go back. Let's go back. Well, I started to do a lot of personal development. You know, I, I, at that point, I couldn't see, 
I, I didn't know the, the exact actions, but I knew that something was going to change. And so uh, I really became a personal development junkie. So I started to do Landmark, and then I bumped into the book, Code of the Extraordinary Mind, written by Vishen Lakhiani, and he talked about transformative experience there. I uh, went through several coaches, but that, that was able to let me see that the life that I had created for myself at that point was really by me. And, what are the other possibilities? And so um, I just started to do things that I wanted to do. That was that I just kind of held myself, you know, from doing before. And so I started to do a little bit of improv. And then I started a nonprofit where I spoke a lot about cancer and transformational cancer stories. And that really kind of got me into the groove of this thing that I thought I enjoyed way back in the day as a kid wanting to be this entertainer. And so um, I think that was it. It was just doing those things that I think would would make me happy, and, and like listening to my body. Wow, yeah, you're 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 having a blast doing the improv. This is great. So I think those were the first steps. And how was your health at that period? Oh yeah, thanks for asking. It was terrible. Right? So um, once I took that bird's eye view, I so I also took uh, took some laps. I was overweight. Uh, my blood pressure was elevated, I was diabetic, and I was taking prescription sleep medicines in order to sleep every night. So, you know, here's this doctor trying to make people well, but myself started to, I had, you know, nearly a lot of the chronic diseases that many Americans have today. And I really believe if you're not conscious about how you live and how you treat your body, those things could happen. Yeah. Yeah. First steps at that point when you said, okay, I realized okay, I'm doing personal development health-wise. Mm -hmm. Was there something you could pinpoint that you needed to quit that was standing in the way of you being healthy? I think ultimately it was that mindset. It was just the mindset that I had no control of my life. Right? Um, you know, sometimes when you choose medicine, and, and uh, I chose medicine, number one, um, to fulfill my parents' dream. You know, we were immigrants here. And I was the first uh, born, uh, my, and you know, we came here when I was three, I was on a refugee boat for, for eight months. And, you know, it gave my parents, it, you know, to see them talk about their son, the doctor, just lit them up. And don't get me wrong, I, I really enjoy helping people. And I do believe deep down that I am a healer inside. Uh, but the path to medicine wasn't necessarily me. And also, I, I, I chose uh, being a doctor. I enjoyed hiding behind the white coat. There was a lot of feelings of not enoughness. And so when you say, uh, what did I quit? I quit the mindset of I'm not enough, that I can't do it right. And I started to adopt the mindset of I can do anything, so bring it on. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Was it somewhere in Vision's book or one of your coaches? Like, where did you realize, where did you make that connection that that was the mindset that you were hiding behind with the white coat? I think it was, uh, you know, during one of the personal development seminars where I, there was a lot of people sharing about what life was at that point. And you started to see the human experience of people creating uh, their life, many based off of fears and hurts they had when they were a kid. And then when you look into your own life, you start, you start asking yourself, what type of reality did I create for myself? And where did that come from? And being able to identify that, well, then you can start to dissolve, oh, that's where that came from. And if you're able to see it, then you're able to say, oh, I have choice to choose something different. Yeah. Just like Ishmael. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I think is powerful about that part of the story is that I believe as physicians we have this societal pressure that mm -hmm. we definitely should have gone into medicine because we wanted to help people and for no other reason. Mm -hmm. And very often that might have been what we thought was the reason at the mm -hmm. time, but like you said, there's parental expectations mm -hmm. or there may be these mindsets that you're using medicine to kind of help mm -hmm. overcome, but 
at 20 or whenever we you know, decide to go into medicine, we're not necessarily all that tuned into our stories and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, when we get to our age, you know, not 20, um, <laughs> 20 plus, um, you know, we have to you know, come to terms with these things. And I think there's some, there's like possibility of shame when we tell these stories. Yeah. Because I will tell, I will talk about, okay, you know, I'm, I don't do full-time medicine and medicine wasn't working for me and everybody like who has not touched the medical field, they have this kind of like why I look, it's like, why? Didn't you go, you get to help people. Didn't you go in to help people? And there's this huge kind of like crushing pressure. And so I think yeah. a lot of docs, when they want to get out of medicine, that's a that's a big challenge. Is yeah. all the, you know, society thinking, it's like, is society going to expose the fact that I didn't go into it for 100% the right reasons? And that's just extra added pressure. Oh, certainly. And it's such, it's such a big issue with docs now. I would probably say there was a recent survey uh, demonstrating that 60, 70% of physicians now are burnt out. You know, and they're not enjoying the practice of medicine anymore. Yeah. Um, and you know, I can certainly empathize how 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 it's gotten there. You know. Yeah. You know, as physicians who are who want to heal, you know, it's funny in our training we were not taught what wellness was, right? Never. We were not taught that we needed to rest or eat well. Rest is for the week. Yeah, we have like fifteen minutes of nutrition <laughs> yes. education. Maybe. So. Um, so a lot of a lot of healing um, and a lot of wellness, you really have to kind of learn on your own, or it wasn't going to happen. But I, I was able to see patients once they started to make mindset shifts about their life. You know, the cancer patients. You know, I had the, this one patient, Bruce. He had liver cancer, and I was treating him with transarterial chemoembolization. So we just put chemotherapy into his tumors. We kept it at bay. Um, every time we had a treatment, some of it would come out, we would treat it, it would come back, we would treat it. He did something during the treatment, which was looking to his life, leaving a place of gratitude there. What he did was he wrote letters to all his brother who he was estranged from, saying, I really want to mend this relationship. And when he got to a, a place of peace, I didn't have to treat recurrences now, this is anecdotal, um, but I have a colleague over at UCLA, we study epigenetics, and we know that emotions of love and gratitude, um, those emotions of, of having purpose, it actually decreases inflammation, increases your immunity, and it increases telomeres, which are these things in your cells um, you know, that mark, you know, it allows your cells to live longer. And so, you know, I truly believe that those mindsets uh, truly, you know, truly help with our health. And I think it's helped, helped with his healing, certainly. That's incredible. Yeah. So in your own life, you're at a point where you're in private practice, you realize things need to change. Mm -hmm. How did that quick go? Did, did you realize that things from that lifestyle were leading to your unhealthy habits? I mean, I realized there was the mindset involved as well, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of stress involved with running a private practice. Yeah, certainly. Well, I was in a group, but certainly, um, you know, I was the uh, the lead physician at that at that hospital, and so I just looked at where I was currently, and I said, "What works for me?" Um, you know, the hours didn't work for me anymore. The the amount of patients that I had to see uh, didn't work for me anymore, and so you know, it was a few months after that realization with Ishmael that. I said, I, I needed to leave, you know? Um, and uh, what that would look like, how it would turn out, I didn't know. Um, and dealing with the discomfort of a steady paycheck uh, and, and knowing what life would, you know, uh, you know being in this unknown and, and where, what the future would, would lead to, that's uncomfortable. But that's just uncomfortable because we're, we're not used to it, you know? I'm still alive, yeah, right? And I'm still doing very well. And one of the things that I've learned to cultivate is really cultivating the feeling of, of being, right? Being able to cultivate love, being able to cultivate gratitude, being able to cultivate the feeling of success, even though I haven't reached my dreams yet. Um, 
and that's a muscle we have to practice. So that's something that, that, that I got to do uh, as I got. Yeah, ooh, that's very good, I like that. When you made that transition, mm -hmm. you talked about the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Were there any preparations you had to make in, I talk about preparations generally following you know, health, finances, or relationships. Yeah. So that those three things are in place mm -hmm. when you make the move. Right, uh, I didn't have a great plan. Uh, but uh, I knew that I had some savings. Now some people have a grandmaster you know, plan in terms of everything written out and they were able to make a very nice strategic exit. And I'm sure you help people with that. Uh, I've, ne you know, I've never been great at doing that <laughs> and uh, I probably need your help. <laughs> but um, I knew that I had enough savings and um, I was gonna jump and figure out how to fall on the way down. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm still doing that. Yeah. Right? Luckily, that's the one of, not the one, but there, there are some benefits to being in medicine. Mm -hmm. And generally, you can try things, and if all else fails, like somebody needs a doctor somewhere. Right. Yeah. There, you know, yeah. it's still a skill you have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the, I think, benefits. I, somebody had interviewed me for a podcast, and they mm -hmm. had asked, isn't it a privileged position to be able to quit? I said, that's, that's an interesting question. Yes and no. Like, some of us have worked in a manner that has given that has given us some tools that we can fall back on, so that we have the you know we feel like there's a leap and there's more of a net there. But I said my first quit was when I was making twenty four grand a year and realizing that that wasn't going to cover if, if my parents ever needed anything twenty four grand a year was not going to cover like all three of us. Yeah. And so I had to make a quit from multimedia and go into medicine yeah. because. Because there wasn't a bunch of abundance at that point. It right. wasn't like I was in a privileged space. I was doing it yeah. so that I would not be in a welfare space. You know, we're right there. Like, let's let's do a prophylactic quit here because I, you know. Right. Um, so it's not always a place of privilege. But, you know, luckily in medicine, that does help a little bit. That we've got something else we can do. How did you end up conquering those fears of the unknown? You said you just leaped mm -hmm. and just, and did you conquer the fear or did you... I'm, I'm still going through it now. I mean, there, there are times now where I'm like, okay, well, I'm not making the salary that, that I used to make. I'm still living in the house that, that I am. Where's the money going to come from? And, you know, uh, you, you start to just make things work. And, and there's, there's, you know, if I need to sell the house, I'll sell the house. But, you know, you, we talk about quitting. There's, there's a point where you, quit, you, you keep quitting stuff, but eventually you'll fall into who you are authentically. You know, at the end of the day, you are still somebody that is whole, perfect, complete, and it's just you, right? And whatever in your life doesn't match or align with that, you do need to quit, you know? And I think, I mean, I think, yeah, you, you could have more strategic plans, but eventually it just, it just means you're coming back to you. Um, so... You know, whatever it takes to get get to that place, uh, I'm willing to do, and I'm willing to, to be uncomfortable doing it. You know? That's so beautiful. Yeah. I there was some quote the other day that reminded me that, like a sculptor mm -hmm. has a piece of clay. Mm -hmm. They don't start with a tiny little piece of clay and add clay to it. As far as I understand, they start right. with like a block and yeah. they sculpt out things. They like are essentially putting little parts of it, right? And that's yeah. kind of like us. We're just blocks and. We don't know what our true authentic self is, but it's there. It's there at the core. Yeah. Kind of, you got to take away, like for example, in your own story, mm -hmm. you got to take away that your own "I'm not enough." Yeah. The thing you're yeah. telling yourself that's the thing that has to be quit, and then with that came a lot of the kind of accoutrement of medicine, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you, once you quit other stories or mindsets, then like you said, the core there's just you. Yeah. Ooh, that's a beautiful place to end this, Ken. Unless you have anything else about quitting or about your health. Whatever a little piece of information you'd like to share with the listeners. Yeah, I think I'll just, we'll start, we'll stop really right around that point because you quit everything. Once you get to your authentic self and really can live from that place, it's funny. We're starting, research is starting to show that once you become your authentic self and exude from that place, you activate genes that improve your health, decrease immunity, or sorry, increase immunity, decrease inflammation that, that makes you live longer. So at the end of the day, like our genes are, and our DNA is created in such a way where it gifts you with abundant health 
when you discover your authentic and true self. Oh. Yes, quit for help. Passion. <laughs> Beautiful. Can't tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, so they can find me on my website, Kien, K I E N, Boo, B U U, dot com. They can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, at Kien, K I E N, B U U M D. Gotcha. And yeah. you, you will see us doing a little jazz that we recorded yesterday yeah. on quitting unhealthy habits. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming on today. Of course, pleasure. All right, for everybody else out there, until next time, happy quitting. Mm.